Okay, so, all right, we did in our pages. What's next? Can we skip this one? Well, obviously I'm not skipping this one because I'm uploading this video. But generally speaking, I guess adding screen tones and text is my least favorite step in the manga creation process. Even though it's pretty much the easiest one. But nevertheless, there are many things that you can do wrong, so let's talk about them. This is the last step, by the way. After this, the manga pages are done. This is another reason why it's kind of a little bit annoying to do that, because it's just like, you're almost done, but you still have to do this one last thing that you don't really like. I'm not sure why exactly I don't like this step. I guess it feels pretty repetitive to me, as I usually use the same screen tones on pretty much every page. And just tapping in text is... Yeah, there's nothing fun about it. But this step can a lot to your story if you do it right. Screen tones are used to add shadows or color to your black and white pages. But you can also use them to create a certain mood. They can contain a lot of certain emotions and are especially useful for shoujo manga. But other genres can profit from it as well. Urasawa Naoki uses very simple screen tones and adds shadows mostly at the inking stage with black solids and hatching. Unami Yukine approaches her manga pages in a minimalist way. There are not many details or screen tones on her pages but they are mostly used to depict the emotional state of the protagonist. Then you have shoujo manga, like Green Garden by Susan, for example. She uses a lot of dreamy, sparkly effects, which fit perfectly into the world of her story. It feels like it takes place in a dream world and has a really different kind of atmosphere. They can also be used to create certain surfaces like fabric, foliage, brick walls and so on. Shoujo manga is really good at using screen tones. I have a feeling that people are kind of looking down on shoujo manga because of its sometimes excessive use of sparkles and screen tones in general. But I think we can learn a lot from it. Shoujo manga also uses paneling in a very creative way to depict emotions and so on. But that's a topic for a different video. I personally also prefer to use certain screen tones sparingly, as it fits the world of another me better. But it doesn't mean that manga that use a lot of special screen tones are bad or anything. They just have a different target audience and they are just basically told in a different way. We should stop being judgy towards girly stuff. Whenever I get to use a sparkly effect in another me, which doesn't happen very often, I don't know, it just, it just makes me really happy and reminds me of the, my shoujo manga days where I used to work on stupid girl. It is kind of embarrassing reading it now, but I'm not gonna hide it. The story is part of my journey as a manga artist. And I am proud of my baby, of my cringy baby. The traditional way of applying screen tones is by using, well, these kind of stickers that you cut into shape using an exacto knife and you just like, you just stick them onto paper and you can also use the exacto knife to scratch things off and so on. But this way is pretty expensive as you need to keep buying those screen tones and they're not exactly cheap. A much cheaper way is to apply them digitally, which is what I do. You can use Photoshop or Clip Studio. If you have seen the previous videos, then you know that I use Clip Studio. So I will be explaining how to add screen tones and text with that program. But I will try to find a nice Photoshop tutorial if you want to use Photoshop and put the link in the description box. If you have inked your pages traditionally, then you can just start adding screen tones straight away. But if you have inked them traditionally, then you need to scan them in first. And it's important to do it right. So let's start with the scanning. I scan in the page straight away. No need to erase the sketch underneath. We do need the page in black and white, but I scan it in color, as lots of lines get erased if you scan them in black and white. I draw my pages on A3 or B4 paper, but my scanner is only A4 size. This is not a problem at all though. I just scan both sides separately, just make sure you lay them straight, 
and then we will add them together. I use Windows Fax and Scan as the program for scanning. It's totally sufficient and it's already pre-installed on most Windows computers. So I go to a new scan, leave all the settings at default and crank up the resolution to 600 dpi. For black and white manga pages you do not want to go below 600 dpi. This way your pages will look sharp in the print. I scan in both halves and save them accordingly. Then I usually open Photoshop where I put the two pages together, but in this video I decided to stick to one program as I don't expect people to have both Clip Studio and Photoshop. So I open up the files, turn them, extend the canvas of the upper half like this. Then I copy the other half onto the document of the first. Lower the opacity of it. Move it around so it lines up perfectly over the upper half. Erase some of the seam. Then turn the opacity back to 100 again and merge the layers. Now you have one page. Let's cut it to size. I cut off all the edges that are unclean or not part of the page. For that I select the area that is supposed to be part of the page. I use the rectangle selection tool for that and then I choose crop on the selection toolbar. Then I change the file size. It's important to change the page size to the final print measurements here in order to avoid the Moira effect. What is the Moira effect you might ask? It is every manga artist biggest nemesis. It makes us sleepless at night, making our eyes bleed when you see it printed on paper. Basically, it's when the dots of the screen tone are making this pattern. This makes the surface look uneven and it's kinda unpleasant for the eyes to look at. It's pretty difficult to avoid though, so in order to avoid it, we need to change the size to the printing size here already. As my book is 13 times 19 centimeters in its printed form, the file size should be 13.6 times 19.6 centimeters. Why? This is the bleed area, which will be cut off later in the print. It is really important to have it. If you don't add this extra room, you will have to add a wide frame later for the print, and it will look bad. You will notice that if you change one side of the file size, the second side will be changed proportionally. So there is no way you can change it to the perfect size you need for both sides. That's why you need to change the canvas size, where you can just cut one of the pages to the size you need. Now we have the page at the right size. Let's clean it up next. First I go to Edit, Tonal Correction, Level Correction. I make the whites wider and the blacks a lot blacker. This way the black lines will be thicker and thinner lines won't be lost in the next step. Go to layer properties and change the expression color to monochrome. Now all the blue and gray lines from the sketch magically disappear as this function turns everything into either black or white. And as the pencil lines are too bright, they are turned into white automatically. Now we're almost done with preparing the page. Last thing to do is to zoom into 100% and erase any dust, dirt or other unwanted things appearing on the surface. Make sure the page is clean. You have to zoom into 100% to make sure you don't miss anything. I know it sounds boring and it is. But at least it's easy, brainless work. This is the stage where I correct any smears as well. Now your page is pretty much ready to be worked on, but I would suggest you flip it once. Remember how flipping the page makes you see mistakes? Yeah. And there you were thinking you finally started getting a hang of things? You wish. Don't worry though, the transform tool, the eraser and the digital pen are here to save you. Make corrections where needed. But don't go overboard. Sometimes it's better to accept things in their imperfection rather than spending too much time trying to change things that are not that easily fixable. So the page looks as good as it can. Let's add some screen tones. If you 
a look closely, screen tones are just basically dots. And depending on how big or how many they are, you have different values. Here is the easiest way to add a screen tone. I pick a kind of lasso tool and then I select an area that I want to have a shadow at. Let's say I want to add a shadow down here on her arm. And not just here, but here as well. So make sure I select additionally. And then this menu pops up, the selection menu, and here on the second last on the right symbol is new tone. So a menu pops up. You can choose all kinds of stuff. The frequency says how many dots there are. The density says how big they are. And you have the type. You can choose between so many. Circle, square, losing what? Line, cross, and also uh, hard or noise. Is sometimes also one you can use. I use circles all the time, and then you also have angle. Angle is what angle the lines are going. Here. Forty-five is the default. If you have ninety, then you just have them like this. But I leave everything basically at the default, so I leave the frequency at 60. Of course you can do it lower, but um, I think 60 looks the best. And then for the basic shadows, I make the density to 10 and I press OK. And here you have your first screen tone. Here in the layer menu you can see that a new layer has been created for the screen tone. And over here in the layer property, you can see all the things that you just picked, the density and the frequency. So you can still adjust it even after you have created the screen tone. Now you can freely draw on this layer. And no matter what tool you use, it will always paint in this screen tone. So if you make a new selection, fill it in. Or you can even use the tool bucket, let's say here and you can just fill whole areas just uh, make sure you refer to other layers over here oh, that's i didn't do it before so then it will pick this area which can save you quite some time or you can make another selection and here in the selection menu you have the fill packet and then you can fill on the top this is how i mostly work And then if you use the razor, you can erase the tool. Just you know, the usual stuff. And then let's say you want to create some highlights in her hair, but the eraser isn't just like right. Like you don't like the adjustments, well you cannot see it very well. Let's change the density to more. So you can see it better. No, you just don't like it. You can actually use any kind of tool as an eraser. So let's pick the G pen. And here next to the color wheel or here underneath the primary and the secondary color you have the well the invisibility color. So you can pick that and basically you erase whatever is on the player with that tool. You can do the same actually even with the bucket tool. So you go to the invisible stuff, click and you can erase whole areas. Or, which is also great and pretty useful for manga, here you have some decorations. Here in the menu you can choose hatching. And Gauze Cloud is like one of my favorite um, cross hatching brushes. And you can either pick it here for, and choose a race. 
I think if you just erase then it will erase the screen tone. Or you just leave it normal and then go here to the invisibility color, invisible color, and erase it like this. If you pick it back to normal, I mean it doesn't really matter what color you choose because you will draw on the layer, it will fill in this tone, but with a scratching tool. So this way with just like one with one layer of screen tones you can already add a lot of different effects. By the way, I also usually have a layer where I add in all the blacks. Okay, so here I have filled in all the basic shadows. And sometimes you want your screen tones to overlap. So if so, the protagonist here, she has a darker skin tone. So I usually use some screen tones to show that, so that she doesn't look as white as the white characters. So I use a screen tone that has the density of 15 over it, so let's do this. Let's fill in the area with... I can just do it bit by bit. Okay. Here I go to the select portion. I don't know. Actually I can make the selection here and then go to clear. But it's still a bit unclean. So erase a bit. So yeah, I have filled it in, but now the shadows have disappeared because the frequency of this screen tone is the same. So as you can see here, the frequency of this screen tone is 60 and of this one as well. And you can see the frequency here as well in the name of the layer. And if you zoom in, you simply cannot see the dots of the screen tone with the lower because they are at exactly the same spot. So if I make this invisible, you can see that it's still there, but it's just being covered by the other one. So what do you do? Well, if density is the problem, then wouldn't it just make sense to change the density? So we could just make the density of the shadows to 50 and then you can see the shadows. But we have the monster here, the Moira effect again. Because the densities are different, it's just like it has this weird patterns which are just like really really undesirable and they will look horrible. So it's important to keep the density of overlaying screen tones the same. So what do you do instead? So we can solve this problem actually pretty easily. Here at the move layer tool, you have the move tone pattern. If you use this, it will move all of your tone pattern, but still within the selection, basically within the area where it's supposed to be. If you do this, then you will move the whole thing to somewhere else. But if you do this, it won't move anywhere else. So what I usually do is go to the basic tone layer and I move the tone pattern of that one layer. And I try to make it pretty central, like between the other dots, because I think that looks most organic. I mean, of course you can do it like this or like this, but yeah, I think this looks the best. And if you were to use another screen tone on top of these basic shadows, let's say you have shadows on top of some clothes where you have the density of 40, you will still be able to see it. And with this, you will have no Moira effect when you print your manga. I keep all of my screen tones at the density of 60. If they're all the same, then I can make sure that there are no accidents happening. So those are all the basic screen tones. You can find all of your screen tones actually in the materials menu. If you don't have it here already, then you can find it in the window. And material... And just pick any and then you, this menu should appear. So basically here you have all of the materials. Some of them are in color, which, well, are 
not rarely used for black and white manga pages, but we can still make use of them. We will come back to it in a moment. Here we have monochromic patterns, monochromatic patterns, and there you can have just the basic with the dots, the lines, and just the noise. So let's say you want to fill a certain area, you can just make a selection here, and then you just drag it over here, drop it, and clean it up. Also, you have some gradients here as well, which I use a lot, so you can drop it onto the area. Let's call this so we have more space. And if you zoom out, you can see this here. This is basically how your gradient is moving, and you can make it wider or the shorter and adjust it accordingly. You can also change the opacity so that it's not quite as dark. Like so, a lot lighter color. Yeah. You also have some cross hatching. So you can also add the screen tones from here in a different way. You can just pick it, drop it, and then you know move it around, change the size. And if you want to apply it, why doesn't it move? To a certain area. You can just make a selection. Like this is the selection tool. And then over here, if you go to create layer mask, it will delete basically anything that is outside of your area and you have here a layer mask automatically. And if you have the operation, you can move the object so you can still move the tone pattern within the selection and pick whatever is better for you or make it bigger or smaller. Furthermore, you also have patterns. Pattern. This is mostly useful for effects like, I don't know, some flowery effects or where you want to add the fabrics or some funny backgrounds. Yeah, there's lots of stuff. And then you have the effects and feeling, which is pretty useful. You just have sparkles and black fog. And one of my favorites is this one. Basically, you can add a gloomy mood within a certain panel. And of course, you have the sparkles here. Can, of course move and cut to size and other things like focus lines and things like that so you have lots of stuff here but it goes even further than that actually you can turn anything into a screen tone so you can actually just draw in a gray a gray color and then if you go to the layer properties of this layer and up here you can change it to a screen tone and then it will actually turn this area into a screen tone which is amazing it does even put gradient into effect so you can probably see it more if you use black it automatically adds in the gradient as well which is great so let's go back to the color patterns Let's say there is one. Here's a pretty one with flowers. Okay, we cannot see anything right now, but let's transform it into a screen tone over here. And now it's, if you're moving closer, you see that it's actually a screen tone. You cannot see through it, so change it to multiply, and then you can see anything that is underneath. So, because it did transfer the brighter areas to just white and not to invisible. Yeah, this way you can do... This way you can actually paint the whole page basically in grey tones and then transfer them into screen tones. But I prefer to work with the actual screen tones because, I don't know, it just feels like I have more control over what is gonna happen with the page and how it's gonna turn out in the print. If you want a particular effect, but you cannot find it here. Of course, you can go to the Clip Studio. Assets. Here we go. This will take a while again. And yeah, you can even type in what you want. Let's say you want clouds. And you either have brushes that you can use as clouds. Or you can have 
cream tones. Also, oh, so terrible. Well, this is not too bad. And this looks like uh, actually like it's in grey tones. But yeah, you could still turn it into a screen tone. Lots of the stuff is free. But best things are usually, you know, you have to pay a bit. But since the Clip Studio assets are made by users for users, I think it's just fair that, you know, the artists get paid for their work. So yeah, I don't mind paying sometimes. If you have read enough manga, you know what screen tones are best for what mood. There are some classics like... Sparkles, lightning, speed lines, dark clouds and many more. They are a visual language of their own. Talking about language, now that we're done with the screen tones, we need to add our text. You can add text and Clip Studio Paint with the text tool, which is symbolized by an A over here. Just click where you want to type your text. And then, you know, type it in. So now it looks really weird because we just typed it in with whatever settings we had on there beforehand. All the settings of the text can be seen here. You have the size, whether you want to have it bold or italic or anything like that, and then justify? Why is this called justify? Well, anyways, I just use center most of the time. And of course you also have the font. So I usually use anime A's. Then just make sure it kind of looks organic and easy to read. Don't make it too close to the borders of your speech bubbles, things like that. And make sure you have no typos, which is a big weakness of mine. Constantly have typos in my text. If you had the text over a non-white area, you can make it more readable by adding a contour. So when you type in this text, then automatically a layer will be created where you can actually see the beginning of the text. And in the layer properties, you have border effect here. So if you click on it, you have the color and you have the size. Let's make this bigger so you can see. So of course we should leave the border white so it's more most readable like this. And then if you change the size, then of course the white border will be bigger or smaller. So, you know, add as much as you need for the text to be readable. Of course, if you have text over black areas, you can just change it to white. Of course, that's also possible. I would suggest you always add a white border to your text whenever you put the text over an, an area that is not completely white, even if it's just like a little bit, like here. It just makes it so much easier to read if you add the border. So yeah, it's really important to make the text easy to read, unless it's intentional. <laughs> if you want some more fancy changes to your text, like let's say it grows from here to here or something, there are also options. First, you have to rasterize the layer that your text is on by right click and rasterize. You're not tapping here anymore. It's more like treated, more like it's a picture, not text. But you can play around with it if you select it and then go to transform and here you have all kind of different transform options. For example, you have free transform and now you can make it grow bigger to the side so it has some kind of 3D effect, I guess. You can then press either on OK or Cancel if you want to apply the changes. We don't want to apply it this time. Or have a mesh transform. There you can play with it even more. Maybe make a wave out of it. This is especially useful if you want to add some sound effects. So let's say because she kicks here, she kicks this thingy here, it makes a sound. So let's choose a font that kind of is a little bit more expressive. Make it bigger and black, please. And because this would just look a little bit boring and stiff, let's change it and we can move this over here. This already is a little bit better but 
still not quite nice. And then let's see. And here you have a much more organic sound effect. You can also add sound effect by drawing them. Here is just like some sound effects I already drew beforehand. Where I also added a white border to them so that you can see it in front of anything non-white. However you want to add your sound effects by typing them or by drawing them, try to incorporate them into the picture organically. Text is part of the visuals in comics and manga. Artists have been using it very creatively for decades. Make the text move along, use it to show how loud something is. A soothing sound can be shown with round flowy letters. Glass shattering you will need some sharp letters, even for spoken language. Different fonts can express different moods. I use Ido as Z for screaming or anger. A happy bubbly voice can be depicted with a twirly font. Even absence of any sound effects or text create their own atmosphere. Time seems to hold still on pages that have no text whatsoever. The visual language of text in manga is a topic of its own for another video, but you get what I mean. As for what font to use, well, it's all up to preference. You can download all kinds of fonts online and install them just by pressing the right button and installing them. Make sure to check the license agreement. You can use almost any font for private use for free, but once you sell your box, it gets tricky. So make sure you use the fonts that are loyalty free or ask for permission to use or buy a license. I use Anime Ace, which is okay to use for independent comic artists. But if I were to suddenly publish another me with a mainstream publisher, I would need to buy a license or use a font that the publishing place has the license for. When you download the font and unpack the zip, it usually comes with the font info where you can find the information about the license. With your text done, the page is done! Hey! Now all we need to do is save the page. I hope you have been saving it regularly anyways. Instead of saving the page here, save as, as a JPEG or PNG or whatever, we are going to export it as a single layer. So let's say we want to save it as a JPEG. This is something I learned while doing research for this video, by the way. And then you just pick whatever place you want to save it at. Let's uh, save it as a test. And then you have this menu popping up. It's important to change the expression color to gray color. No matter if you have some layers in your file that are color or monochrome, just save it as gray. And here in advanced settings of color, you can actually enable tone effect for layer. So let's say you want to publish your comic online, but you don't want the screen tones to be dots. Then um, if you enable this, then it will save all the screen tones as gray areas, but we want to keep them. Okay. And here you can scale it down. So for if you want to have it for the print, then of course you should keep it at 100% and then save it. But if you want to publish it online, then this size would be way too big. So I usually save it as at around 30%. And this way, when you have a, when you basically scale down your page, Clip Studio will still save it in a way that the Moira effect will be as little as possible when you uploaded it online. I mean, depending on the screen, you cannot avoid the Moira effect completely, but it will reduce it by a lot. So let's say I want to yeah, save this page just for uploading it on Animex. I would keep it at 30. If I want to save it for the print, then I do it at 100. Usually I do both when I finish the pages, so that I don't have to do it later. This is some kind of a weird preview, which it's just like every artist's Moira nightmare. And press OK. And you saved your page. I used to save my pages as a JPEG and then in Photoshop I would I would reduce the size to 30% and then upload it to Animex. And I guess that made the Moira effect usually a little bit worse for the online version. So yeah, learn from my mistakes. And with this, we are done! The manga page is finally complete. This was a lot of work. 
but there is nothing more satisfying than completing a chapter of your story. And it's even more satisfying to finish a whole book. This, or this in its third edition, took me two years to complete. And that doesn't include all the rough story planning before I even started drawing. It has been two years since this book first came out and now I am days or weeks away from finishing the second volume. Only some finishing touches are missing, but there is still a lot of work. <laughs> but yes, I'm really close. Follow me on social media for any kind of updates. I'm pretty sure that the pre-ordering phase will be starting very soon. I will add some goodies that will be given only to people who are pre-ordering the book. If you pre-order it, you will really help me to cover the printing cost as this project pays me basically nothing. I just hope I can cover the expenses. So yeah, now that the steps of creating a manga series is over, my YouTube channel is over. No, of course it isn't over. There is still so much to talk about, about visual storytelling. This wasn't even that much about visual storytelling, but just, you know, explaining the steps. The journey only begins here. So I hope you stick around, press the like button, subscribe to this channel and press the notification bell. And feel free to follow me on my social media where you can see any kind of updates, work in progress and other stuff. All the links will be in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!